Hi Stampers, Friday fun day. Happy Friday. Okay, got that taken care of. How's everybody doing? I'm like rubbing my hands together because I didn't come in my room and get the heat turned up and it's really cold in here right now. So you may or may not be able to hear the heater going, but yeah, it's chilly. And my light situation is casting this uh, light. Well, I can see on my iPad, it's not too bad, but uh, when I'm looking at it on my phone, it looks kind of wonky. Anyway, I don't think people have caught up to the fact that I am back doing my live videos. I don't see anybody jumping on just yet, but if you're watching this on YouTube, I did do it live on Facebook, and so you may hear me say hello to people along the way if people jump on. And hopefully it will warm up in here soon so I'm not freezing. I'm doing a fun uh, square card today using the Life is Beautiful set and I will show you that here in just a second as soon as I get the um, phone mounted. I kind of wanted to go over this set real quick again. Um, I did it on Tuesday when I hopped on. Um, it's the quite curvy bundle and there's actually four pieces to this um, bundle and you can buy just the quite curvy stamp set which is this one and it has a coordinating die set bundle hi Shannon and then there's a Christmas one you can get all four of them and they'll be available November 3rd uh, third yeah I think it's the third so here's the Christmas one this one will only be available until I think it's uh, the first part of January Jan January 3rd but if you're wanting it I wouldn't wait because it may sell out really fast and then there's paper that goes along with that called classic Christmas so check that out um, coming up on the 3rd of November and since Shannon jumped on, hi Kathy, I want to show you guys, it reminded me, which I was going to tell you, I am wearing art by her hubby Darren Smith. This is one of his um, designs, and I chose to get it in a long-sleeved red shirt. There's different, um, you can get it on sweatshirts and t-shirts. Hi Donna. Donna, I'm so sorry about your brother. And um, anyway, it's at Teespring, I believe, is where I got it. Thanks, Shannon. I love it. I got three shirts. This one, the one with the octopus, and the one with the pumpkin. My grandkids all call me pumpkin, and there's a story behind that. And so when I saw the swirly pumpkin one, I ordered that onto a purple long sleeve t-shirt and I love that too and I won't just be wearing that at uh, this time of year <laughs> but anyway um, yeah Teespring I think it's T-E-E-S-P-R-I-N-G and um, that's where I ordered them from if that's not right Shannon uh, in fact if you could go ahead and um, pop the link up on that would be great if you're still on here and um, <laughs> yes yeah pop a link up that would be great and then people will know where to go look for it okay you guys I'm gonna get started so let me flip my um, phone around here and get it in the mount here we go and here is the October host code if you um, shop with me this month, please put that in at checkout if your order's under $150. So there we go with that. You'll always find it on my landing page too at my shopping site, which there is the address for that. And then this is the set that I'm 
uh, focusing on today, which is the Life is Beautiful. I just love this tree. It's got great leaves, which we're going to use. It's got these fun little doodahs, which you could make kind of a magical tree, um, which would be really cool for a Halloween card. It's got these fun polka dots, a shadow. Um, it's got three uh, sentiments, hello, thinking of you, and life is beautiful. And it is a photopolymer stamp set. There is not a die set to go with that. And like I said at the beginning, we're making a square card. So here is all the parts and pieces. And I'm going to give you some measurements. And just keep in mind, too, if you make a square card that you are going to mail, they do charge extra postage for that. And now I'm not sure. I think cards, I don't think the rate on cards went up. I think it was just on packages, and it's only for, like, over the holidays. So this is a piece of Mango Melody, and it is five and a half inches square and I made it a, a side folding card but you could make it a top folding card it, it doesn't matter either way hey Darren thank you I love 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 my shirts okay and then I cut a piece of very vanilla to go on the inside and I just cut it a quarter of an inch smaller so it's five and a quarter inches and you can get um I think in the stores you can get envelopes that fit a five and a half inch card and six inch square cards, but um, you can also make them yourself. Okay, and then I have another piece of Mango Melody cut at five and a quarter, and I'm gonna be embossing that. And then the other colors, I love this color combination. So we've got Rich Razzleberry, and it is cut at three and three quarters inches square. And then another piece of very vanilla that's cut at three and a half inches square. And then this is also the same measurements. So three and three quarters by three and, and the plaid is, um, three and a half inches square. There's the side, the other side. So on one side, it's the, these plaid papers kind of had fall colors and on the other side, more Christmassy type colors. And that is from the um, plaid tidings paper pack. And they are six by six papers and you get a lot. I love this paper pack. And then I have um, some scraps here because the top square I'm going to cut out using the, um, the uh, what is this called, layering squares. So you get scallops and straight edges in this set. And I'm gonna be using the largest scallop and then the next size down in the straight edge. Okay, so that's all the dimensions. And let's get started. Okay, so this piece here of the melon, uh, mango melody, I'm going to run it through this embossing folder and it's um, the Scripty 3D embossing folder. Okay, so I'm going to put it in here and you'll kind of want to just line it up so that the writing isn't going wonky. So that looks fairly straight. And I always like to run these embossing folders through with this edge first because it's kind of slightly beveled where this one's very abrupt if you were running it through your embossing folder. I think it goes in a little bit easier with this edge first. So I'm just gonna run it through my machine real quick.
Okay. So there it is. You can see that's raised up there. And then just so that, let's see, actually I'm not gonna do that on this piece yet. This is going to go right on top of the card itself. And then I have um, another, this, no, this one here, this layer. So while I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and run this layer through because I'm gonna use that same embossing folder, but this square is gonna go on like this, like a triangle or like a diamond. So I wanna make sure when I put it in the embossing folder that I'm lining up these two points on the same sentence. Does it matter really? Probably not, but I just rather have it be kind of straight. So I think that's, that looks pretty good to me. So let me run this one through real quick. There we go. I love that. I just think that font is so pretty. Okay, now on this one, I've got a little piece of sponge here and I am gonna use Sahara Sand ink. And I'm gonna do this really lightly. I just want to highlight that writing. So I'm kind of just barely touching it. very gently and my hand got a little heavy when I did my first card and I I mean it looks okay but it wasn't the look I was going for I just really wanted the words to be what was a little bit darker. And you don't actually even have to do the whole thing because only the points are gonna be showing. So I'm not even gonna worry about the middle part really because it's not even gonna show. Almost done. Okay, I think that's probably sufficient.
I think I'll go ahead and attach these just so I don't mess up here and use one of my pieces for not what I meant for it to be. So I'm using up some scraps of my um, dimensionals and I'm popping up this layer here. Today is our little pod, our little Chihuahua's second birthday. Time goes by way too fast. So he got some new little goodies when I went shopping this morning, but he doesn't get to have them until his dad gets home from work like he even knows what's going on, but hey, we do. I'm sure it's far more fun for us than it is for him, but he'll have fun when he sees his new toys. And I shop in the um, baby department because their toys are of course made for a baby, and I'm talking about the little soft plush ones. So, they're made very safe because, you know, they make them so babies don't pull things off. And they're far more fun than the, to the toys in the pet department because most of the time they have something in them that is either musical or um, rattles, you know or has that crinkly paper in it. So he's getting a new fun thing from the baby department and a new bone. And just one of those Nyla bone ones. That's the extent of his birthday presents. They have a basket full of toys. It's always kind of fun to watch which toys they pick out to play with. They'll scatter them all out and then I go pick them up and put them in the basket and they get this look like, what are you doing? And then they'll go sniff through them and it's like, I just wait to see which one they pick back out. Right now they have a ton of them out. Okay, I guess I got all of the backs off here. All right, make sure I don't put it on upside down. I'm not right over the top of it, so I'm just guessing here on getting it where I want it. Okay. So there is that. And now the next layer. Just using a little liquid Tombow gives you that wiggle room when you put it down to get it straight. Good thing I did because I'm not getting it straight. Thought 
I had it going on straight. There we go. Okay, that's gonna be that. And then this is the plaid going on to another piece of the Mango Melody. So quiet. I always am wishing I could play music in the background, but then, you know, YouTube doesn't like that, and neither, neither does Facebook, because even if I have said that I don't own the rights to the music, sometimes it causes problems, so I just don't even do it. Okay. So now I am going to use my dies to cut these two pieces out. And like I said, I'm using the largest um, scallop and I'm gonna cut out this piece of rich razzleberry. I'm just gonna stick a little piece of stuff on it here. Run it through my machine. So there is that. And not the largest um, straight edge square, but the next one down. And I'm just gonna cut this out of very vanilla. Okay, time for stamping. So I've mounted the tree, which doesn't quite fit on my block here. And I'm going to ink it up with early espresso. This glue, I know, I love this glue too, and it dries so fast. Okay. So I want the trunk coming down onto the point there, but There we go. So there is that. Loving this cleaning cloth, I say it every time, but man. It does such a wonderful job and it stays wet in that case for so long. I just love it. 
And because my case has that broken piece, you know, it gets enough air in there so it doesn't, um, it doesn't get smelly or anything. But if you have a case that's not broken, <laughs> you can poke a couple of holes in it. Just use your pokey tool or whatever and um, give it a couple little air holes. They don't seal completely tight anyway, so I don't know if that's absolutely necessary, but probably wouldn't hurt anyway. Okay. All right, now let me put this pad away. I'm going to use Rich Razzleberry and the word hello from the stamp set, which is written so pretty. And I'm just going to stamp it on the edge here. Pretty. Let's see, I think I'll leave that out. And which colors do I want to start with? I've got the leaves mounted here. And I think I will start with Mango Melody. don't have to line anything up they just need to get on there and I kind of like to make some look like they're falling off the tree here let me see I just kind of wanted these two. There we go. And then that one I'll do last. So what color I... I'm going by the colors that are in the plaid. So I did Mango Melody, I want to do Rich Razzleberry, and I want to do Cherry Cobbler. So I think I will do Cherry Cobbler. And since these colors are dark, let me see how they stamp and then stamp on the second generation. Yeah, I'm gonna do second generation. So I'll stamp off once, and then stamp. Very pretty. Stamp off, stamp, I love it. I stamped off twice that time. Go over that little boo-boo and cover it up. Pretty. I like it. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Seal. Hi, everybody. Hope I didn't miss saying hello to anyone. Okay. 
so that was Cherry Cobbler. And then let me bring back Rich Razzleberry. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stamp off because that's a really intense color. And I've got a little ink there on the side of my block, so let me get that off because I don't want that popping on there. I love these colors together. One more. There we go. I like it. That is a colorful tree. Okay. Now I want to put a swing on there and let's see I think I'm gonna use my um, stamp and write markers because I'm gonna color right onto the stamp and I think I will make the birdhouse that mango melody color let me see if I pull the right one out. I did. So I'm just going to color right on there. I don't know if you'll even be able to see that showing up, but it's there. I'm going to color the birds cherry cobbler. They can be little cardinals. There's two little birds. I think I will color the roof with the um, early espresso. And I'll go ahead and color the rope or whatever it is that's hanging the birdhouse with the same color here. And then I just need to huff on it here. And hang it down. Actually, I'm going to wipe just a bit off of the rope there because I don't want it sticking above the branch. There we go. Cute. Right, now we can finish putting this all together. And I've got this very vanilla for the inside. And I don't think I'm going to stamp anything on it just yet because this card with it saying hello on the outside can be for any kind of a, an occasion just depends on how I finish it on the inside. I 
Thanks, Shannon. Okay. There we go. Now then. It really took me some work when I made my next layer for this because I was, I mean, if you were going to put it on that way, just square, you can see what a big border there is. Well, I cut it way too big because when you turn it like this, you know, it makes a big difference. So it took me one or two tries to, I had to get my ruler out and figure it out. <laughs> of what size my next square down needed to be. And I saw a card that was designed like this on Pinterest, and I just liked, I liked the layout of it. So that's where I got my inspiration from. And I guess if you wanted to be really super precise, preci um, yeah, you know, precise, you could measure your card and mark it or whatever. But, you know, I think close enough. Okay, so there's that one. Then next is going to be the plaid square. And the corners hang over, so you don't, you can just kind of put glue in the middle there. And I am going to use glue this time. Because like I said, the corners hang over, so you don't need to really put adhesive on the corners. Okay, so this one... It's really kind of easiest to line up if you just ignore the, the diamond shape below it and go, you know, try to make it even with your square on the four sides. So I think that looks pretty decent. And then this one's going to get glued on there. And this one we're going to pop up. Okay, and of course we have to add some bling. What do you think of these colors though? Do you guys like it? I think it's really pretty. I like that combination. Thanks you guys. And then I'll show you the one, my sample one I made because it's, it's completely a different color scheme. All right, oh, and I'm using the champagne rhinestones. And 
I'm gonna do the largest and the smallest together here on one corner and then the medium one up here. Just gives it a little zip, zippity doo dah. Okay, that's it. Really pretty quick and easy to make, but it sure turns out pretty. And if you just follow the color, you know, use your um, patterned paper, whatever, whatever that may be. It doesn't have to be plaid. And, you know, pick out three colors or whatever and go from there. That kind of sets it up to make it a little bit easier when you're planning your card. What did I get over here? A little piece of something. What is that? Oh, plastic. I don't know where that came from. Okay, so here is the first one I made, and you can see there, totally different, more um, typical fall colors in that one. There was um, Cajun Craze, um, Pretty Peacock, and then Mango Melody again. So that was the colors in that one. And I did the same with the um, Pretty Peacock. When I stamped it, I stamped off one time before I stamped the leaves on that one, but that was the only color I did that with on that card. Hi, Kathy. But other than that, you can see what I'm talking about when I got heavy handed with inking up the embossed image on this one. I got way more ink on it than I wanted to and that's why I was trying to be really careful and be light handed when I did it on this one. And I used um, crumb cake. Uh, that's the that card color there is crumb cake for those two pieces and this one was cinnamon cider and then um, Cajun craze so that was the colors I used on that with that piece of plaid from the same paper pack I like them both but I mean they're they're very um, the color schemes are very different from each other but I like them both I think what's your favorite I'm kind of leaning towards that one just because I love the bright, I love bright colors. Anyway, that's my card today, you guys. I hope you are um, having a great week. I know that it's troubling for some and just got to make it over that hump and know that your friends are thinking of you. And... Anyway, hang in there, you guys. Um, have a good weekend. Happy stamping, and I will pop back on Tuesday. Hopefully, I'll have something fun for you then. See you then. Happy stamping. Bye-bye.